If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout without question the hardest story i've had to report to you so far in 2024 has been the story of that blasphemous art posted in the cathedral of capri in italy it's that blasphemous art depicted our lord um being engaged in an impure act of a James Martin variety. And as a friend pointed out to me, he messaged me asking if, uh, if I'd noticed that it looked like our Lord had, um, that this was being done to him after he had expired on the cross. And I hadn't noticed that. So there you go. I thought I'd share that with you. And I'm bringing this up today because the laity there have had enough. They have been outside of their cathedral, making their voice heard making sure that people, that the bishop knows that this is unacceptable. A bishop who has defended this. Now remember, last week I brought to you the story of a nun who defended this. Who defended this on the with the full authority of the German bishops, who published on their official website her repudiation of those protesting this. I don't know how far down the sort of the, the impurity rabbit hole you have to go, how mired in the filth of this world you have to be to accept this sin to make it seem like this is okay but the fact that a nun did this is is breathtakingly out of touch with with the faith and with reality her excuse as you'll recall was that our lord is frequently depicted without anything on on the cross and so we shouldn't be bothered by that well, typically our lord on the cross actually is depicted with uh, with a cloth around his waist to protect his dignity, to remind, remind ourselves that he is our Lord and he is to have some dignity, even if historically it was very unlikely that he had even that on. There are limits to the accuracy that we will depict of a, on the cross. But she defended this, missing the point that not only was it the without the cloth being a problem in the depiction, but it was also the act that was being done to him. Doing, being done apparently after he had given everything on the cross for us. A breathtakingly impure depiction. And the laity in northern Italy have had enough. And they're letting their voice be heard. So we go to the website that broke the story initially, Loc Nueva Busola Quotidiana, with their headline, Blasphemous Exhibition, The Faithful Repair the Offense Defended by Their Bishop. More than a hundred in front of the church of Santa Ignazio de Carpi to pray in front of the Gratia Plena exhibition. For the first time, the faithful make amends for a blasphemous art act defended by their own diocese and their own bishop. And it's just the beginning. The prayers will continue. I hope we see more of this. Not just there, but anywhere that we see this kind of evil pr prop up. In the past, it was the diocese, I think his name was Innsbruck, that had this in Germany. Similar kinds of evil art. The one that I keep bringing up whenever the story comes up is there that the bishop decided to show an edgy picture of a pig's heart on the altar, as if it was the sacred heart. He couldn't believe the pushback he got from this. And so this year appears that he's been rather quiet about the artwork he's been posting, which is good. He should probably, if you're going to put art in your parish in Lent, which seems like an odd choice anyway, at least make it sacred art and not something that is supposed to be some thought-provoking, pot-stirring version of art. And I say if you're going to do that because Lent is a time of year where towards the end of Lent, all the sacred imagery in a parish gets covered anyway. Famously, you've seen the purple cloth that adorns the crucifix, that, that it covers the statues and any other relics with the exception of the stations of the cross. Every other piece of art in your parish gets covered at this time, towards the end of Lent. So what makes these guys think that this is okay to do during Lent? 
if you want to put up art in your parish, maybe wait till the octave of Easter to do such things. Anyway, I'm speaking too much sense, I think, here. So let's go see what the laity are doing. The laity have stood up and said no, and I think you're going to like what they're doing here. From the article, quote, Here are the sheep. I hope they smell us, exclaims a middle-aged man as he points to the small crowd on the sidewalk. We are in Carpi, under a leaden sky which at times threatened rain. More than a hundred people gathered in front of the church of San Ignacio to recite a holy rosary of reparation for the exhibition Gratia Plena by the artist Andrea Saltini, inaugurated on the 2nd of March in the Museum Diocesan of Carpi in the Church of Sant Ignazio, still consecrated. The artist is not so much to blame. The real culprits are the ecclesiastical authorities who organized this mess. Despite the protests of the faithful, they continued without hearing the voice of the faithful, complains a young lady, owner of a shop near the church. Apparently, it was she who raised the first alarm. She says that several people close to the managers of the diocesan museum tried to make them think about the inappropriateness of presenting an artistic exhibition with clearly obscene and even blasphemous paintings. What do you want? They replied. It's art. And they move forward, despite the growing scandal. In fact, within the exhibition, there are several clearly obscene paintings, as later revealed exclusively by Busola, since they are sacred people, our Lord and Our Lady, we cannot help but also describe them as blasphemers, precisely the most scandalous, which shows Our Lord in an ignoble attitude, we placed on the main altar, still consecrated for the celebration of the Holy Mass. End quote. Yeah, this art, this so-called art was placed on the altar for Holy Mass. Now, ignoble attitude is one way to describe this, I guess. It doesn't even begin to do this justice. It... This is the kind of stuff that calls down the wrath of God. It really does. We're talking about our Lord depicted in a James Martin act after he had given everything on the cross. Now think about that. The artist isn't totally to blame. Are you sure about that? This is where I will disagree with that layperson. The artist isn't totally to blame. I'm sorry. The artist is the one who created the image. Think about the amount of time it takes to, to make a painting. Think about the inter... The, the inter internal sort of thought process that goes on when creating art even if it's not even if it's false art like this the artist definitely has something to blame he's deep digging deep down into some sort of internal chaos to come up with that but that artist is a known member of the james martin crowd you know one of the voices i'd like to hear from in this actually is james martin what does he think of this piece of art Perhaps it would do him and his cause a little good for him to be front and center when we see these kinds of evils happening in the church, done by people, the same groups of people that he has spent so much time working with, that he should get them to, I don't know, moderate what they do in the, when it comes to interacting with the church. But really, the blame for this lands squarely all, at the end of the day with the bishop and the priests there. They should have seen this art and, and laughed the person out of the out of the chapel at the very least, if not, you know, pulled a money changers in the temple kind of act with that our Lord did when they tried to present this. But instead, they defended it. They said that this was sacred art and that we should all lighten up. That was what they said. And then you got a nun defending it later. So and she was in Germany. So this became an international issue, not just a local at Northern Italy issue. The lady aren't done yet, though. They have a lot to say on this. Quote, The Gratia Plana exhibition leaves the faithful speechless with indignation, explains Mrs. Marta Polia, one of the young organizers of the Repertory Rosary, a sacred art that arouses opposite feelings compared to those that should be reserved for our Lord on the cross. It is not to be considered as such. In her history, the church has always played a didactic role in expressing devotion and love through art. Here in Carpi, exactly the opposite happens. In fact, the big question that many participants have asked themselves on Saturday was, is all this for the greater glory of God? The answer is clearly negative. The local faithful attempted to make their voices heard, asking the curia to suspend the exhibition. All their attempts, however, went in vain. Then three mothers wrote an open letter to the curia, which La Nueva Busola Quotidiana reported on. The response of the bishop, Monsignor Ario Castellici, was, to say the least, shocking. Evil is in the eye of the beholder, not in the obscene image. <laughs> Wow, His Excellency seems not to take into consideration two fundamental points of Catholic doctrine. One is the force of the original sin, whereby our nature is prone to sin. On the other hand, one cannot ignore that Catholic doctrine is very explicit. Voluntary placing oneself in the immediate situation of sin constitutes in itself a sin. 
The more you put others in such conditions, snubbed by the ecclesiastical authorities, despite the full synodal process underway, the faithful therefore decided to call a holy rosary of reparation before the church. More than a hundred people, mostly from Carpi, but also from Moderna, from Modena, prayed the rosary and the litany. Kneeling on the floor still wet from the rain, then they recited the prayer of reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. A Salve Regina closed the act in style. End quote. I would actually suggest going further. This almost requires a new devotion of reparation. We have the Five for Saturdays devotion as a as a essentially a, a reparational act done by the faithful for five consecutive first Saturdays for to do to repair damage done against as offenses of the Sacred Heart against the Immaculate Heart of Our Lady, including things you know sins of many Protestants when they say that she wasn't you know about against her perpetual virginity and sins against the Immaculate Conception and all these other things that they mostly are the ones doing as well as atheists who get their worst talking points from them. That's one. That's one such devotion. We need something like it because the five or the nine first Fridays doesn't quite do the same thing. Although perhaps that would be a good one. We need some leadership from bishops on this. This is a much bigger story than it's being treated by. And it needs to have attention brought to it in a way only that somebody like Cardinal Mueller can bring attention to this. Mueller, who is a moderate, really, in the church among the bishops. He, or a brand Mueller who's retired, or Cardinal Zen, or somebody like that, needs to bring attention to this and call for either a, a new devotion or something that exists already to be done by the lady on a large scale to shame these, these bishops and, of course, to, to repair offense to the Sacred Heart. This is not something that we can let go away. This is like the worst depiction I've ever thought of. And I thanks to the friend of mine who messaged me about this because I, I, I can't believe I didn't notice it, but it could be that my brain was shutting down looking at this or an original story. And th you'll notice this time, I didn't put the picture of the art on screen. I did this in my story about the nun doing it so you could see. But that was once and that was enough. What do you think of this, though? Do you think it's good that the laity are taking are taking the initiative to, to essentially engage in acts of reparation for this? But do you agree with me that we need leadership from, from cardinals and bishops and other high-profile figures to essentially make amends for this? Should this be something done by exclusively by those in northern Italy, or should this be Catholics the world over? Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. And hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.